All right, now I have the two panels done. Um, they're sitting here behind me. They have, uh, everything is cut to size. Um, so on this panel, let me see real quick. So on these panels, we've made them uh, 78 and a half by 30, I want to say 36. Yes, 78 and a half by 36. And what that allows is they're slightly oversized from the opening that they're going to be sitting in so that we get about a half an inch on all sides um, tucked away into the styles and the rails. So in order to achieve um, our overall door size though, we need to cut our rails, which are the vertical or the horizontal pieces, um, and those have to be um, 36 inches, um, a rough cut at 36 inches. And the reason is, is we're going to have, we're going to take, we're going to create a tenon on either side of them that are going to be a half an inch in. So the tenons will be a half an inch long, and those are called stub tenons because they don't go as deep into the lumber. You can certainly make them deeper if you want to, but for this application, the stub tenon is fine. Stub just means that it's a little bit shorter than normal. So, and then what we're going to do with each of the style and rail pieces is we've got to clean up these edges, which as we said before, or I said before, you know, they got glue on them, they've got saw marks, um, and it, it, when, back when we kind of aligned these and everything, one side is pretty flush, but one side has maybe a little like less than a 30 second of uh, material, one side is proud of the other when we glued up these two pieces of one by four. So what I'm going to do now is for each piece of each of these pieces actually, I'm going to run them over the table saw. I set the blade just over an inch and a half um, high to make sure that I cut these exactly three and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it and do the other side. I'm going to cut them at three and a half to make sure I'm good on the flat side and then I'm going to flip it over and I might, um, I will bring in the fence on the table saw a little less than a 30 second. So just a nudge, just so you can get the dirt and the crud off and um, any residual glue um, and get this thing pretty even on both sides. Now, if you have a planer um, in your shop or a jointer like we showed earlier, you can certainly run these over. I recommend still doing them on the table saw first, one that saves your jointer blade um, a little bit of, of trouble, and those things are you know, a little bit more expensive on average than a table saw blade, um, or your planer knives. And then once we get those all cleaned up, um, I will send mine through a planer that we have in the back of the shop. They're just too big and bulky and heavy to manage with a jointer, so we run them through a planer, standing them up really kind of next to each other, um, you know, like so, and then we'll run them all through the planer at the same time. Now, for those of you who don't have a planer, I, you know, let me offer a, a suggestion. One is you can trim them down just a little tiny bit on each uh, of these sides of the rails here in the styles and then flip it over as I said and run it again and then take a sander and run it over to get rid of the saw marks if that's what you want to do. Um, there's always a good way to do it. I, I, you know, it's just a habit of good woodworking. If you've got the tools, use them. If you don't, then make do with the best that you have and that's what's important. That to me is a quality job. Um, it's not being perfect, it's not running out and buying all the special tools you see um, people in these videos or on TV use. Um, a good woodworker can find alternative methods to manage um, getting very good results with the project that he's working on with the tools that they have. Um, whether they're hand tools or they're not the fanciest, uh, you know, new greatest tool that there is on the market. Um, you can do very fine with this with just a table saw and a sander, um, even hand sanding. You can take a sanding block with about 120 grit on it and rub these things down after you go through this, the, um, the table saw. You'll get rid of all those marks. And once you put the finish on it, if you apply the finish properly, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between or too much. You know, the untrained eye or the novice eye, rather, is not going to be able to tell the difference um, unless they get really up close and they see like, oh, he didn't use a planer on that or something. The average eye, your friends coming over to see the cool stuff that you've done, 
they're not going to be able to tell. As long as you do a good job and make sure both sides are flush and you sand them over lightly to get rid of the, of the saw marks. The next phase, what we're going to do is then um, we're going to route a dado all the way down the styles and the rails um, uh, on each of these things to be able to receive the door. So this is just like making a flat panel cabinet door that's larger than the typical, about well, twice as large actually as the typical flat panel door, um, twice as thick. So what we need to do is we need to route a channel in here to receive the flat panels that you see behind me and we need to run those on both styles and both the bottom and the top rail and then like I said we'll create the stub tenons, we'll put the panels in and we'll glue everything up, clamp it together and put some nails in some right places which I'll show you um, and then these doors will be good and ready to go. What I'm going to actually do is stain these panels first and put a coat of polyurethane on them because if you've ever stained cabinet doors or painted your doors in your house, maybe you got a sprayer for Christmas and you went and you sprayed all the, the six panel doors in your house or something and you painted those white and then come winter time, um, you know, it gets really dry and the wood shrinks and the panels shrink and all of a sudden you see this line of bare wood um, along the edge of some of your panels and this is because of expansion and contraction and so I don't want to risk that you know even though it's winter now they're, they're gonna expand in the summer more or less but over time I don't want them to expand and contract um, sufficiently such that you know they start showing a little bit of line where we didn't catch stain or something like that um, you know so we're gonna stain the panels before we put them in and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later I tend to get ahead of myself to try to let you know what's coming um, but anyway so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set my table saw for three and a half I'm gonna run each of these boards through at three and a half exactly to try to flatten up the um, the one side and then I'm gonna turn the boards over flip them over remember I'm running them on the face so I'm just cutting off the edges because that's what's uneven um, and then I'll move this, the fence in a little bit so that you can um, shrink them up a little bit on the other side and clean everything up. And then I'm going to cut them to size and I'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to manage the stub tenons. Okay, I am all done planing and sawing down all of these boards. Um, I will mention one thing again as a safety precaution. Um, not so much a safety precaution, it's just something to watch out for on the, when you're putting together these boards. All lumber stores um, have a different, I wouldn't say all, a lot of lumber, lumber, uh, lumber stores have different um, mills that they go to for their, for their lumber or different lots have different thicknesses. So, you know, what I found out when I was building these and I stacked them together, the lumber that I get from the um, hardwood lumber store that's near my house, about 45 minutes away, um, is, is actually not three quarters, it's closer to seven eighths. Whereas the stuff I get from, you know, like Home Depot or Menards is about three quarter, maybe a little bit less. So when you're putting these things together, you have to be mindful that, you know, if you're trying to build this nice, you know, giant cabinet door for all uh, intents and purposes, um, you're going to want to make sure that these styles and rails are all the exact same thickness if you can. So if you don't have a planer to get you down to that thickness, again, you know, select your lumber carefully, measure each piece. Um, you can either you can even do like a seven eighths piece with a three quarter piece, and if you can do enough of those pairs together, then they're going to be the same size and the same thickness. Um, it's important for that so that when you meet the styles and rails together, they're not offset to the back or to the front. They're going to look, you know, nice, like the edges are all supposed to butt up to get uh, towards one another. If you're a little bit off, eh, it's okay, you'll sand that down, it's a soft wood, it sands easy, it's fine. Um, so now we're ready to essentially route the dado, and we're going to be routing a dado or a groove right down the center of this piece. And when that is all done, being routed, it will fit over the door. Um, so we're going to have about a half inch of the door sliding into this groove that we're going to route here. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to be setting up a, a dado blade on the table saw. And I've not used this tool before here on this channel, so I, I want to walk through it very quickly. There's essentially a couple different types of these dado blades. 
there's um, adjustable dados, which is, a, this is what I started with. It's less expensive typically. I think nowadays it's probably, you know, six of one, half dozen the other. I don't know, but it, this is a much less expensive blade on average. And you basically just dial it in. Um, as you turn this dial, um, the way that the arbor spins um, is, um, is going to be conducive to how thick the, the dado channel that it plows out is. Now, what this ends up happening is it ends up wobbling like this when it's on the saw. And so that's kind of what, you're just wobbling a saw blade basically. Um, and that's all this is, is a saw blade sandwiched between these special mechanisms that, you know, as you twist them, they allow the arbor to get thicker or, thin, or you know, wider or narrower um, for your cuts. And this is okay. Uh, it's certainly, you know, I used this for a long time before I got this other set, totally fine. Um, one of the limitations is if you're a perfectionist or striving towards perfection, um, because it wobbles like this, it creates a minor um, upside down smiley or a U-shape um, curve, kind of like a, a, a concave curve into the bottom data um, bottom dado channel now that doesn't really matter because today we fill those things up with glue but in some applications like really fine fine furniture that you know are meant to be heirlooms and last a thousand years then you may want to invest in a in the next type of dado blade i'm talking about which, which i just like to use a little bit better now i don't even usually use that that thing is very old um, but i keep it around just in case um, is the, the next kind of dado blade is a stacked dado blade and the stacked dado blade basically comes with two kind of normal looking ish seven inch saw blades or so or these are eight inch now so um, essentially these are just going to be stacked together um, facing the same way um, you got to make sure they're facing the same way and the the heads of these chippers that are on here are going to basically plow out the groove. Now, if I just put the two blades together, and I want to offset those blades, I don't want the I don't want one blade touching another blade. They have to be kind of, you know, halfway in between each other. And then I go ahead and put this. This will be a quarter of an inch, essentially, um, dado that this thing is going to plow out. It's going to have a nice flat bottom or flatter than the the you know kind of dialing in a dado. Um, the wobble head cutter um, and in order to make um, the dado wider the set comes with these different different pieces now this particular set comes with four 1 8 inch thick um, pieces of steel and they each have a cutter head at one or a tooth rather at, at each end and all you're going to do is you're going to stagger these things around in a circle between the two blades so actually let me just quickly put it put it together how it's going to go now it comes with four of these 1 8 inch ones and a 16 inch one so because obviously you know you know it comes with a, like a little scale or a table that kind of tells you um, if you want to take out a 7 16 inch wide dado you're going to go ahead and stack you know, these two blades here, plus one of these, plus the flatter 16 inch one. There's a whole combination of different ways you can assemble this thing just by, you know, adding or taking away the different thickness of, of these cutter blades, or, you know, and, and allows you to get the different dado thicknesses or whatever. So in this particular case, they also come with shims, which are um, like little minor, very small, um, pieces that kind of can go between these things too to get really micro fine adjustments. I've never used them and the reason is is because the lumber doesn't come in exactly the type of shape that you need it to um, and plus the way I'm going to show you how we cut dados um, you're going to be it's going to be perfectly right on no matter what. So really what I want to do is I want to create a three quarter inch wide channel. Now the, um, so what that means is just to finish that, that conversation, I guess, is to, I'm going to stack these four things, um, which will give me a half an inch thickness because they're each an eighth of an inch thick. And then if I add the quarter inch here, that's going to make the total width of this dado three quarters of an inch. And I'll show you very quickly how we adjust this. You, you basically just put one blade on the arbor, make sure the cutter heads are angled toward the the direction of the blade which is usually toward you always so um, 
and then you put the four pieces on and then you put the last one in and it creates like this sandwich and all I can recommend when you do this type of stack dado blade you want to just space them out relatively evenly to one another you don't want them all bunched up necessarily at least that's the way I do it um, and then you'll you'll be ready to cut this um, cut the dados or the channels in here now our channels are going to be I, I actually think I, I quoted an error um, I cut the widths of those uh, rails, the upper and bottom rails for the door, at 36 and a half. And what that'll allow me to do is it'll allow me to have three quarters of an inch of um, tenon going into the mortise. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, I will show you every step, I promise. But sometimes I like to explain it ahead of time so that when you see it, you can go, ah, that's it. And if I forget to explain something that I'm doing, then you know, you might be lost or I might forget it or, you know, whatever. So anyway, um, we want to cut a three quarter inch wide dado or a little bit wider and then, or slightly wider actually, because some of the boards that we put on there were, you know, not on par 100%. So we had to sand things down so they may be a little thicker, a little thinner. Um, but we're going to start with a three quarter inch dado in each of these and then uh, towards the end, we want to make sure that there's at least three quarters of an inch, maybe just a hair more. Uh, the channel is going to be three quarter of an inches, uh, three quarters of an inch deep into each one. And the reason for that is expansion and contraction. So the panel, when you first put it together inside the styles and the rails, you're going to have a half of an inch um, into the left and right and into the top and bottom rails. Um, but it's winter now that I'm building these things. The wood is drier in the winter. It dries out. It shrinks. Come the summertime, when it gets really humid and everything, it's going to expand. And you, you must, 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 must understand um, expansion and contraction. If you do not, you're, you're going to build things that crack over time. They will split because nature moves no matter how many nails you have in it, no matter how much glue you use. Nature will move the pieces for you. So in the summer, when they expand, if they're not free to do that, uh, they're gonna they're gonna crack. They're gonna buckle in the middle because nature cannot be cannot be postponed or forced to not do what it's supposed to do. A lot of you may see that sometimes you've heard of people putting in wood floors in the winter, and they don't leave the right space along along the edges where the wood gets close to the wall. They need to leave at least a quarter inch or more, sometimes up to a half an inch or three eighths to a half uh, when they put in wood floors. And if they don't, if they just start butting the pieces up against the wall and then cut the piece really tight, come summertime, the floor is going to expand and in the middle it's just going to buckle up like a ridge. You're going to see it and, and, it's, and it's not repairable. I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing to have happen. So make sure you understand how the thing is going to expand. And wood typically expands um, along the grain, not in the long direction, but in the, you know, if the grain is running this way, it's going to expand this way. So expand and contract this way. So in our door, that whole panel back there is going to expand and contract. And, it, you know, I, I forget what the measurement is. I just kind of do it off the, off the cuff now. But, you know, it may expand, you know, an eighth of an inch or something across a whole foot. So if I've got a three-foot door, I want to make sure I have at least you know uh, a quarter of an inch on each side so that I've got a half inch total uh, of movement and so that's why these um, dados need to be three quarters of an inch, is, inch deep because I'm going to have a, a quarter inch of space on all sides so that everything has the ability to expand and contract just fine. Okay so I'm going to hook this into the the table saw and I'll show you a quick um, video of how I'm going to do that or just a little few seconds of how that goes in. Um, i got to take the old table saw blade off and get it set up. Again, if you're going to be doing this kind of a stuff, this kind of a stuff, if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff, then you definitely want to um, invest in a dado blade. It, it's worth it. I've, I've used it, you know, at least two, three times a year um, to do certain types of things. It's just easier on the table saw than to, it's going to be very tough to get a router set up and, and draw a router over here. The last thing I'll say is, you know, especially if you don't have a very powerful table saw, don't force it. Don't try to push the lumber through blowing a fuse or a circuit or tripping the, you know, safety, um, uh, what is it, the, the safety circuit on the, 
um, on the saw motor. It's just not worth it. So I may make two or three passes on each board. Um, so it, you know, just you're kind of settling in for the long haul now. You got to get this stuff done. And if if you got a if you got a three horsepower or a five horsepower table saw, go for it. Take all three quarters of an inch out if you can. That's fine. I don't I don't have that. I yeah maybe someday I'll get that. But I've had this stupid table saw. It's just a contractor hybrid kind of saw thing. I, I've had it for 25 years I think, and uh, or 22 years, and it's been it's been fabulous. I mean you just keep it up, and I've never had a problem with the motor, never had a problem with the arbor system, nothing. So I I just am too cheap to go buy a new one for the sake of buying a new one. So anyway. Um, that's it for now, and I'll get this dado hooked up on the arbor, and then we'll start cutting some some dados with our blade. Okay, um, you can see here I've got the the stacked cutter head. Um, this actually should I'm going to change this. Actually, you can see they should be a little bit more you know further spaced out than this. Um, but sometimes you know you're putting four or five of these blades on and uh you know it's actually six total and then they get kind of out of you know out of sync when you're tightening the nut down so i'll, I'll retighten that just to make sure um, i've removed my zero clearance insert which if you have a table saw you definitely want to get these these help reduce tear out on all of the stuff that that we have so i, I think i bought this one i mean you certainly can make them um, i tend to if it's not quick i buy versus make because the money saved is a little bit better or if it's really expensive then i'm going to make it not not buy it all right so i've got a little bit here uh sticking out you really need an insert for this so what i'm going to do is since i have another zero clearance insert i'm going to sacrifice this and i'm going to basically lower the blade all the way down it needs a little wd-40 i think um, and then what i'll do is i'll put this in and then poke it up through the saw a little bit at a time. And this zero clearance insert does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it makes it safe um, so that when the blade is protruding, you don't have this really large gap here. Um, anytime you're cutting like this, a piece of wood could fall in that gap and pop out at you or, you know, and believe me, it's, it's flying when it comes out of there. I, I've had that where the, um, this is an old fence, so it doesn't really have a, a good riving knife system, but, um, or this is a, an old table saw, but in any case, I've had it where the, the board gets bound here and then comes shooting back out like a, like a rocket, and I've gotten hit by that once before. So, you know, it takes about one time, if that, and then you learn your lesson. But in any case, the way these zero clearance inserts work is they, they basically ship them, and there is no hole. And then you just set them in, you adjust them to your table, and then you, you turn your saw on and you slowly raise the blade so that it, it carves out what's needed. So not only is it a safety thing that you don't have this big giant gap here that I'm trying to, you know, you know, maneuver a small piece of board over like this, you know, if my hand slips down there, that's just not good. Now, what ends up happening is usually your saw is not 100% um, accurate. It just almost never is. So when you run these dados, if you run it like this, and then you flip it over, and you run it like that, you'll have a hole that's exactly, a channel that's exactly in the middle of this piece of wood, or it's actually two pieces joined, but it's for all intents and purposes, one board. Um, so we wanna kind of allow for that. So you have a bunch of, like if you cut these boards, when I made all my cuts, I have these extra pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a couple passes over and then I'm going to test the fit on the panel that you've seen in the back of the shop there. Okay, so it's okay to have those. Make sure you get like lots of good scrap pieces left over. Don't be so over conservative, you know, to save every, you know, quarter inch of wood uh, that you have, you know, to try to, to try to, you know, cut your final pieces a quarter inch uh, scrap material left. You don't want that. You want some good scrap left over because you're going to make mistakes. Okay, so I'm gonna start running these over the board. I'm gonna do the first one for the camera, but I'm not gonna sacrifice the clearance, the zero clearance insert right now. And what I'm gonna do is just back this off and make sure that we are, now I only wanna cut about a quarter of an inch off. Uh, so, 
right now, so I'm going to cut it about like that. And then as I said, I'm going to move it about three-eighths of an inch uh, from the blade. The cool thing about this dado, the stacked dado head, is um, the, the one blade rests against the same arbor stop that your regular saw blade does. So when I set this thing to three-eighths inch away, I'm three-eighths inch of an away, just like I would be, uh, I don't have to make any special measurements on my, uh, on my table saw. So this is going to be a little bit dusty because I don't want to turn the dust thing on yet. Um, and I've got to clean up a bunch of dust around here anyway, but I just want to kind of show you what it looks like. Okay, so now you can see there's a groove here in the bottom where there wasn't before. And this is about a quarter of an inch deep right now. I've got to go three quarters of an inch deep all the way around um, so that I can um, then, after that, the next step is then to cut the stub tenon. So I'll be, I'll be doing this and then I'll be checking it uh, against a piece of, um, you know, the panel that's, that's set up in the back here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these things cut and channeled out and fit and then we'll actually make the, the tenon itself.